Good evening, Summit Church. My name is Reese Kelly. I am a missionary and expedition leader with Overland Missions. And I wanna share with you quickly a, a testimony um, from an expedition that I was a part of. It was in the Southern province of Zambia. And um, at this point we had been out, we'd already been out for one day. This was our second day, I believe it was. We'd already shared the gospel house to house. It, it wasn't new, we were getting in the groove of things. And um, I remember we were crossing over this creek and uh, it opened up to this field. We were told by uh, some families that we visited, like, hey, you'll find more people in the gardens. Uh, they, they go there in the cool of the morning and then they hang out under the shade trees when the sun's high. And so we come over this creek and it opens up to this big field and in the middle of that field is a shade tree. And there's like maybe two to three people there under that shade tree. So our team's like, let's go. We're gonna sit down with them, we're gonna share. And as we're just getting comfortable there in the dirt under the tree, what was two to three quickly became 15. People were coming out of the woodwork and it was clear through introductions that the, the gentleman we first started talking to, he was the patriarch. He was telling us as people were coming, oh, this is my son, this is his wife, these are his children. This big group was all connected through this one man. He was the headman of the area. And, and so as we were presenting uh, the gospel to him, Genesis to Jesus, as we were encouraging him, our, our team, he was receiving it, but his response was the same for everything we said. He said, I've, I've gone to church. I know the Ten Commandments. We'd share something else. We were excited about it. I've gone to church. I know the Ten Commandments. And so finally, as the conversation was waning, uh, my leader kind of looks down the line of us and he says, does anybody else have anything else to share before we go? Now, I don't know how you feel when you have something to share, but my gut dropped and like all the saliva uh, just left my mouth, right? And my heart's racing and like my hands are shaking. I'm trying to hide it, right? And I'm like, crap, I have something to say. Um, and I asked the guy, hey, can I just share my story with you? Now, to kind of give you a little bit more context, I want to take you just one year before that moment. If you ask me, Reese, how can God use you? How do you know, uh, like, what, what do you know that God can use you in ministry for? My answer would have been service, man. I, I can do servanthood, you know? Like, if we're the body of Christ, I'm the calluses on his hands, you know? Uh, like, I can play Batman if you want me to, but I play a much better Robin, you know? I had all those lines. I was the background character and I loved it. But because that was where my giftings were, that because that's what I loved, I, I limited God. I said, hey, I, I'll leave the preaching to other folks. I've I kind of resigned my testimony to maybe being a pretty vanilla testimony. I, I grew up in church. My dad was a pastor. Nothing majorly exciting, nothing majorly woeful, nothing happened in my life that would really shake somebody, you know? I thought, man, my testimony is nothing to really share. I grew up in a biker church, which that explains why you were immediately intimidated by me as I took on the stage, but no, I, I saw many great testimonies of former addicts, former convicts, former gang members, people who had heinous pasts. I saw them in the altars. I saw them with tears in their eyes. So I thought, man, could God actually use my testimony? I don't think so. But there, under that shade tree, my gut dropped. There under that shade tree, God was moving on me to say, hey, can I share my testimony? And with a guy I have nothing in common with, a headman, an elder in his community, a man who has grandchildren sitting in his lap, a man from the other side of the world in Zambia. I said, I was like you. I went to church. I knew the 10 commandments, but there came a moment in my life where God encountered me. And he said, 
I wanna know you more than just your dad's religion. I wanna know you more than just your parents' faith. I wanna truly know you on a personal level. David was sharing on Friday uh, about 1 Corinthians 13, and I'll give you the flyover view of it. It says, even if I can preach like my favorite preacher, if I can prophesy with pinpoint accuracy, but I have no love, it is void and empty. It's nothing. This guy had church. This guy had the Ten Commandments. He had everything, but he didn't know that God loved him. So I said, hey, I really believe that I'm under this tree with you today, here in Zambia, to tell you what God told me those many years ago, that he loves you and that he wants a personal relationship with you. Now, I love Zambians, I love them, but they don't express a lot on their face. And so with a blank stare, he looked to the dirt and he looked back at me. And he says, I believe what you've said and I want you to pray for us. And that man knelt down under that tree. I'm like, I'm blown away. His whole family kneels down with him and we pray with him in that moment. The encouragement I want you to take from this testimony is I had counted myself out, but I was there. I had, I had all the good arguments to tell myself, hey, we, we said enough. We, we gave him the full gospel. He, he either gets it or he doesn't. But there is a moment of obedience to say, God, if you can take my plain Jane vanilla testimony and do something with it, then I'll have the sweaty palms. I'll, I'll, I'll do what you need me to do. And to this day, that is maybe my most favorite testimony because somebody totally unlike me encountered a Jesus that wrecked his life just like Jesus wrecked my life.